Chapter 20 Crossing the Jungle The sight of the infamous tiger of Malaysia had struck such fear in the soldiers that not one of them had even thought of firing his weapon. By the time they recovered from the shock, it was too late. The two pirates, ignoring the bugle cry sounding from the villa and the rifle blasts fired by the soldiers in the park, were already racing through the bushes and flower beds, avoiding the shots. Running furiously, within minutes, Sando Cananianes had reached the trees. They stopped to catch their breath and look about. The soldiers that had tried to trap them in the furnace had rushed out of the hothouse, yelling at the top of their voices, firing into the groves. The men in the villa, finally realizing their colleagues had found the formidable tiger of Malaysia, raced across the park, hoping to beat the fugitives to the wall. Too late, my friends, yelled Yanis. We'll get there first. Give it all you have, added Sunokan. We can't let them cut us off. Ready when you are. They ran off at full speed, keeping to the trees to remain hidden. Once they'd reached the wall, they scaled in seconds and jumped down to the other side. No one? asked Sunokan. Not a soul. Into the jungle. We'll lose them. The jungle was only two paces away. They raced in at full speed, but soon found their path blocked at every turn. Durian trees, banana trees, sugar palms, and orange trees towered before them, wreathed in dense tangles of calamus, rattan, and gamba vines. Piper negrun and betel plants grew so thickly they could almost not pass. Drawing their crisses, they hacked their way forward, slicing through bushes, roots, and vines, but it was not long before their advance came to a halt as they would have needed a cannon to smash through the wall of vegetation before them. What now, Sandokan? I don't see a path anywhere. We'll climb our way through, said the Tiger of Malaysia. We've done it before. Thank God we've had the practice. No better way to throw the British off our tracks. Yes, but we'll still need to get our bearings. Trust me, Yanis, my jungle instincts are infallible. Do you think the British are nearby? I doubt it, replied Sandokan. If we're having trouble and we're used to living among the trees, they couldn't have advanced more than ten paces. Regardless, best we get away from here as fast as possible. They may have put a few dogs on our trail. Our knives will scare them off, Sando can. They're more dangerous than men. Come, Yanis, time to start climbing. Grabbing onto rattan, calamus, and piper vines, the two pirates began to scale the wall of vegetation with amazing agility. They climbed up, then down, then up once again, making their way across the net of vines and branches, cutting through groves of banana trees and advancing past the giants of the forest. Their sudden arrival did not go unnoticed. Splendid morabos and crowned pigeons flew hurriedly off. Toucans escaped in a blur of red and blue. Argus pheasants with long spotted tails scurried for shelter, as did the beautiful turquoise alulas, squawking and whistling sharply as they disappeared. Even the proboscis monkeys, surprised by their unexpected intrusion, quickly headed for cover, howling in fear as they sought refuge in the hollow of a tree. Sanokan and Yanez advanced fearlessly, maneuvering from plant to plant without ever once losing their footing. They jumped confidently among the calamus, hung for an instant, leaped to a rattan vine, then grabbed onto branches and made their way forward, swinging from tree to tree. Having gone five or six hundred meters, repeatedly risking a fall from those incredible heights, they stopped to catch their breath amongst the branches of a bua mamplam, a tropical tree that bears succulent, resinous fruit. We can rest here for a couple of hours, said Sanakan. No one will come to disturb us in the middle of the night. It's almost like being in a well-provisioned fort. We were lucky to escape from those rascals, little brother. Sitting in a furnace, surrounded by ten men, and managing to save our hides is a true miracle. They must fear you immensely. So it would seem, said Santa Cam with a smile. Do you think Mariana knows we've managed to escape? I think so, sighed the pirate. I'm afraid our little outing will spare his lordship to seek refuge in Victoria. He won't feel safe now that we he knows we've landed. You're right, Yanis, said Sandokan, his face darkening. We should go look for our men. Let's hope they've arrived by now. I'm positive we'll find them at the mouth of the stream. Unless some tragedy has befallen them. 
don't give me new things to worry about. Anyway, we'll know soon enough. Are we going to attack the villa right away? Depends on our options. Would you like a suggestion, Sandokan? By all means, Yanez. Let's wait for his lordship to set off for Victoria. I doubt he'll remain in the villa for much longer. An excellent idea. It'll be easier to stage an attack once they've set off on their journey. We'll ambush them in the forest. Once we've taken care of his soldiers, we'll kidnap the young woman and set sail for Montpresem. And his lordship? We'll let him go wherever he pleases. What does it matter? If he goes to Sarawak or England, it will make little difference to us. He won't do either, Yanez. What do you mean? He'll never accept defeat. He'll lead all of Labuan's forces against us. You don't fear that, do you? Me? Do you think the Tiger of Malaysia is afraid of him? They'll come in great numbers, heavily armed, bent on conquering my island. But we'll be ready. There are legions of natives throughout Borneo waiting for me to summon them. As soon as I send word to the Romads in the larger islands, dozens of Prahus will flock to my banner. Oh yes, undoubtedly, Sandokan. As you know, Yanez, if I wanted, I could start a war on the shores of Borneo and unleash hordes of men on this wretched island. You won't do that, though, Sandokan. Why not? Once you've kidnapped Mariana Guianok, you'll lose your taste for battle. The tigers of Montpresem will never take to the sea again. Sandokan sighed. That woman is full of energy. You wouldn't have to beg her to fight by your side. But Lady Mariana will never become the Queen of Montpresem, will she, Sandokan? The pirate remained silent. He took his head in his hands and his eyes, lit by a gloomy fire, stared off into space, attempting perhaps to glimpse the future. Sad days ahead for Montpresem, continued Yanez. In a few months, perhaps even within a few weeks, we'll abandon our formidable island and set off for who knows where. It had to be this way, I guess. We've gathered more than enough wealth. Time to enjoy a quiet life in some opulent city in the Far East. Enough! murmured Sandokan, his voice barely a whisper. Enough, Yanez. You don't know what fate holds in store for the tigers of Montpresem. It's easy to guess. You may be wrong. You have a plan? I don't know yet. Let's see how events unfold. Shall we move on? Still a little early. I'm impatient to see my prahus. The British could be waiting for us on the outskirts of the jungle. I'm no longer afraid of them. Careful, Sandokan. You're about to start one hell of a fight. A well-armed bullet can kill even the bravest man. I'll be careful. Look, it seems as if the trees are thinning out down there. Let's go, Yanis. I'm eager to know what happened to our men. As you wish. Despite fearing an attack by the British, who could have advanced into the jungle slithering like snakes, the Portuguese was just as impatient to see if the Prahus had escaped the terrible storm that had swept the island's shores. Having quenched their thirst with the juice of a few bua mam plam, they grabbed hold of the rattan and calamus vines straddling the tree and lowered themselves to the ground. It was not going to be easy to make their way out of the jungle. The trees grew thickly beyond the little clearing. Even Sandokan had become disoriented and no longer knew how to find the stream. We're in a fine mess, Sandokan said Yanis, his attempts to spot the sun and getting his bearings ending in vain. Which way shall we go? I'm not quite sure, replied Sandokan. I think I see a path down there. It's a little overgrown, but I think it may lead out of this place, and... Did you hear that? A bark, replied the pirate, his face darkening. The dogs have picked up our scent. Probably just a coincidence. Listen. A second bark sounded from the middle of that dark jungle. A dog was advancing through the thick vegetation, trying to follow the fugitive's trail. Think it's alone? asked Yanez. There may be a native with it. A soldier couldn't have ventured into such chaos. What shall we do? Wait here for the animal and kill it. With a rifle shot? No, the sound would give us away, Yanez. Draw your Chris. We'll wait. If it gets dangerous, we'll climb up this pombo. The two pirates hid behind an enormous tree anchored by thick, twisting roots cloaked in rattan vines, and waited for their four-legged adversary to appear. The beast was quickly gaining ground. Branches and leaves rustled as the barking grew louder and louder. 
There could be no mistake. The dog had picked up the pirate's scent and was racing after them, possibly leading a band of natives on the attack. There it is, said Yanis. A black dog, its mouth bristling with sharp teeth, had come out of the bushes. It was a bloodhound, an expert tracker of the type used by slave catchers in the southern United States. Spotting the two pirates, it stopped for a moment, studied them, then jumped onto the roots with the speed of a leopard. It attacked rapidly, snarling menacingly. Sanokan had crouched down and drawn his kris, while Yanez had grabbed his rifle by the barrel, planning to use it as a club. The dog pounced upon Sandokan, the closer of the two pirates, and attempted to rip out his throat. But the tiger in Malaysia would not be taken so easily. As quick as a flash, his right hand shot forward and plunged his blade between the animal's jaws. Almost simultaneously, Yanez dealt the dog a powerful blow, smashing in its head. I think it's had enough, said Sandokan, standing up and pushing the whimpering dog away with his foot. If this is the best the British can do, we won't have much to fear. I wouldn't relax just yet. There could be a few men following that dog. They would have fired upon us by now. Let's go, Yanez. The two pirates headed in among the trees, trying to follow the old path. Though it was overrun with plants, roots, calamus, and rattans, the trail was still discernible and seemed as if it could be followed with little difficulty. Unfortunately, appearances proved deceiving, and every step brought forward new obstacles. Their heads would brush against large cobwebs strong enough to trap a small bird, or they would trip over thick roots snaking through the grass and tumble to the ground. Frightened by the appearance of the two men, numerous draco lizards scattered off in all directions while other reptiles, their sleep having been disturbed, quickly sped away, hissing menacingly. Unfortunately, the trail soon disappeared, forcing Sandokan and Yanez to resume their aerial maneuvers among the rattans, gambias, and calamus. Their journey, however, did not go unnoticed by the tree-dwelling bigots, black-furred monkeys that abound in Borneo and the nearby islands. Angered by that unwelcome intrusion, those primates would have often blocked their path, showering the trespassers with fruit and branches. Unable to use the sun to get their bearings, they continued to advance haphazardly for a few hours. Then, spotting the black waters of a muddy river flowing beneath them, quickly made their way down to the ground. "'Won't there be water snakes in there?' asked Yanez. "'No, just leeches,' replied Sanokan. "'You think it'd be better to advance up the river? "'It'll be faster than swinging through the trees. "'Well, let's see how deep it is, then. "'It won't be more than a foot, Yanez. "'But you're right. Best to make certain.' "'The Portuguese snapped off a branch and dipped into the river. "'You were right, Sanokan,' he said. "'Let's go down.' "'They abandoned the branch and lowered themselves into the stream. "'See anything?' asked Sanokan. Yanez bent down and scanned the infinite green arches stretching over the river. "'I think I see some light down there, off in the distance,' he said. "'Think the forest is thinning out?' "'It's probable, Sandokan. Let's hope you're right.' Trudging up the muddy river, they slowly made their way forward, at times grabbing onto the branches above them to aid their advance. The foul stench of rotting fruit and leaves permeated their every step, carrying with it the threat of fever. The pirates had walked a couple of k a quarter of a kilometre when the Portuguese stopped suddenly and grabbed onto a large branch that stretched across the river. What's the matter, Yanez? asked Sanokan, drawing his rifle. Listen! The pirate bent forward and fell silent. Someone's coming, he said after a few minutes had passed. A powerful roar echoed through the green arches, instantly silencing the birds and monkeys. Be ready, Yanez said Sanokan. There's a Mayas in front of us. And that's not our only problem. What do you mean? Look over there on that large branch stretching across the stream. Standing on his tiptoes, Sanokan quickly looked to where Yanez had pointed. Ah, he murmured calmly, a Mayas on one side and a Harriman Debing on the other. Load your rifle and be ready for anything.'